Hello everyone, my name is Trevor with SkySiv. In this video, we are going to be highlighting the general section designer and how you can design complicated concrete sections without ever having to leave the section builder itself. So with Structure 3D, you can use a section builder to model, analyze really any shape that you pull from the section builder. Um, but for concrete shapes that do not align with a T-shape or rectangular shape or a circular shape, there isn't really a, a way to get a deliverable answer on the design of that section uh, in accordance with some of the uh, design codes that are available in the reinforced concrete design module. Um, so shapes like a hollow section or bridge girder would be a good example. So we're going to go through an example design of a hollow concrete section using our general section analyzer slash designer. So the general section designer is located within the section builder, which we are in now. It can be accessed using this design button here, and it's a design concrete button. Um, so when, we use in, when we're using the general section designer, we're actually checking the section itself for a given set of forces, uh, different load cases or what have you. Um, so it's going to check the section against biaxial bending, but any shear or serviceability checks as they relate to the design code that you're using would still need to be completed since we're not giving this section uh, a dimension of length. Um, so just like with any other section in the section builder, we're going to use FEA to find the section properties, uh, not use empirical formulas. You can, empirical formulas, so you can really design any shape here. So let's get started by going to the My Sections page. Um, I've already created a hollow section for us, so we'll click this, bring it into our, our, our design here. So we have a couple of rectangular shapes. Um, you can see that this outside portion is the remaining of that of that cutout. So it's a hollow rectangular shape at this point. And really with any custom section, if you've drawn it in AutoCAD or DXF, uh, again, you don't have to use these database uh, shapes to manipulate it. You can import an AutoCAD or DXF file directly. And this is going to be probably the, the most common case for the majority of these custom sections. So once we have our section, that's all I really need to do. Let's load the designer up and we'll see the general section uh, analyzer stuff come over here. So let's click on design concrete. Now we have our general section analysis here. So similar to other, on the other menus, you want to just see there's five different menus here. We want to go through each of them and make sure that, uh, that everything is correct. Overall, the workflow follows a handful of steps and that workflow can be summarized by the images that image that's currently shown on the screen. So we need to first draw the section, which we've done. We need to add the material properties for the concrete and steel, um, you know, the concrete and, and the rebar. We need to add the load cases and then basically run the analysis and check the capacity from it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the concrete material here. We want to make sure we pick the correct design code. So we're going to use ACI for this. We're going to pick 4000 PSI concrete. That's what the C4000 stands for. We can see that the, it's going to generate our stress strain diagram here automatically based on the, the concrete class that we have and the design code that we have. So it's going to automatically create um, this graph for us. And this is what um, the section design is going to be based off of. If you wanted to add any different diagram points here, um, maybe you're, you're going with less of a strain or a higher strain or for either value, you can add those lines in here. Let's move on to the rebar material. Same thing. Let's change the, the code to ACI. We'll, we'll use 60 KSI or grade 60 bars. And then just like before, you have a stress strain curve for both tension and compression through there. We're going to keep breezing along here. We're going to get to the rebar position. This is where uh, a little more input is required. So this is where you would uh, draw your rebar in um, into your section. And this rebar coordinates would be um, showing up here. So we can either use point bars or lines of bars to generate our rebar layout. Um, but we're going to use line of bars to generate the first few. Um, so for example, bar diameter here, we have uh, 0.875. Let's change that to a number five. So 0.625. We are going to have three intermediate bars. And then now we just need to click on the locations of the start and end points. So start point there, end point there. That's our first line. We'll come again up here. Start point there, end point there. So we have our locations here. We have our um, coordinates of, of our two lines. And let's add a couple more. Um, we'll take the start and end bars off and we'll add a couple of rebar on the other side here. And obviously when you're, when you're drawing it, it's not gonna be very accurate, but um, you know, not super, super precise, but that's why we can come in here and, and edit these values. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna play around with these values quick to get it to 
uh, more accurate to what our depiction is and we'll come back and we'll, we'll move on with our design. All right, so we're back with our layout here. I actually changed the sidebars to a couple of point bars to show how that works. So we have our two lines up top and we can edit that data. If we go to our switch on our point bars, it's just like a, a data sheet here where we can input the Z and Y values and the, and the uh, diameter of the bar. So really in this case, you can create any type of um, layout of rebar for any for any shape because it's just depending on the, the data sheet information. So we'll move on here. We'll go to section loads. Now that we have our concrete material, rebar material, rebar position and section loads, um, right now we can put in our section loads um, you can put in multiple different cases. So if you have, you know, reactions or um, envelope results of five different cases or whatever that is, um, you can add as many different section loads um, as you want. So what we'll do before I put these in is, is if you're confused about where the, the positive signage is, uh, if you hover over this tooltip here, we can uh, see what the positive and negative um, sign nomenclature is for each direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some forces in here, put a few different locations, and we'll come back and we'll run the analysis uh, and take a look at that. Okay, so we're back and we have our three different load cases here. We have a high axial load case, and we have a um, axial and moment in one direction case in the MZ, and then we have a case where there's an axial load, a moment in the Z direction, and a moment in the Y direction. So now that we have our concrete rebar and uh, material and rebar position set up and the section loads, let's run the analysis. Something cool that you might have seen earlier uh, in the workflow picture that is that was overlaid is the 3D interaction plot. So if we click on this, now it shows the 3D M-N plot, um, which you can rotate around here. So this is the 3D version it has the slices of the moment uh, MY versus MZ curves going uh, horizontally and those can be toggled based on the FX value or the axial value and similarly you can switch to the moment slash N curve which you probably see um, with any biaxial column or beam design and this is most likely going to be con uh, pretty constant around the, the route around the way here but uh, that can be toggled as well so the, the green values are going to be the load cases that we had, have applied here. So we have load case one, two, and three, fairly low in usage. Um, and the, the yellow would be the max capacity um, along that line. So it calculates the point, and then the yellow would be the max capacity for those three um, load combinations or load cases. So this is just something really cool you can use to get a more visual look at how your section is faring. So we'll close out of this. So let's take a quick look at an example report here. We'll look at the first load case. This is where it was all axial. They're fairly simple reports, but they're going to show all of the pertinent design data here. Um, because this is all axial in just a little bit of moment, um, all of our rebar here is blue, which means it's in compression. And the section itself is this darker shade of gray, so that means it's all in compression. Um, it's going to tell us the max stress of the concrete, max strain of the concrete, and then it's going to also tell us the max stress of the reinforcement, minimum stress of the reinforcement. Um, so you're getting a really good picture of what uh, each component is doing. If we go back and look at one of these moment cases, we'll get to see uh, the neutral axis being shown on uh, the difference between our compression section up top here and the tension section on the bottom. So we have uh, the cracking here at this location, everything in darker gray, uh, that concrete is in compression, and then basically we have the cracked concrete below and the, the rebar in red is the, is the rebar that's being in tension. And then similarly, the, like before, the rebar in blue is the rebar that's in compression. So for a variety of different load combinations or load IDs here, you can generate those reports and take a look at uh, your complex section and see how it uh, interacts with those forces. Definitely stay tuned for even more advancements and functionality that we're going to add to this tool. Uh, we really hope to make it an even better and more immersive uh, function that you can use in your overall SkySiv suite. That's going to wrap up this complex concrete section design example here in the general section analysis slash uh, design tool. Note that any section can be designed using this tool, and we hope that you guys uh, find it very useful. So if you like the video, please give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well as following us on LinkedIn and Facebook. And we hope to see you guys on the platform soon.